At Hoffel Broadfield Plantation Historic Site in Brunswick, the question we're most often asked is, where does that name come from? The plantation here started in 1806 when William Brailsford arrived here from Charleston and purchased the property. Brailsford responded to an advertisement that had run in the Savannah Republican newspaper offering all that valuable tract of land situated and being on the south side of the Altamaha River, known by the name of the Broadface Tract, late the property of General Lachlan McIntosh. One hundred years later, his granddaughter Ophelia Troop recalled, Brailsford's walked to and fro while the clearing of the land and the building of houses went on. They were a gay-spirited set and took up the gauntlet quickly without throwing it down. They had broad faces and insisted on changing the name from broad face to broad field. This is how Broadfield came into my family. By the 1840s, Broadfield Plantation was owned by James M. Troop, son-in-law of William Brailsford. At that time, the property consisted of over 7,000 acres and 357 enslaved workers, one of the largest rice plantations in coastal Georgia. Troop died in 1849. His will split the property between his heirs. The northern portion, which retained the Broadfield name, went to daughters Matilda and Clelia and son James Robert. The extreme southern portion, known as New Hope, went to son Daniel Hayward Brailsford Troop, and the middle property, called West New Hope, was left to daughter Ophelia. In 1847, Ophelia had married George Columbus Dent of Darien. When the couple took up residence on the newly inherited property, they renamed it after the school that George had attended in Switzerland. In 1833, an 11-year-old George was sent to Europe for his education. He wound up at the Hoffel School near Bern, Switzerland. Hoffel was one of the most prestigious schools in Europe at the time, but it made an odd choice for a southern plantation owner to send their son. The school was owned and operated by Philip Emanuel von Fellenberg, who was known for his anti-slavery feelings. George spent almost a decade in Switzerland, first at Hoffel, later in Geneva at the school of John Humbert and Alphonse Briquette. George's son James Dent later wrote that his father did not like the institution of slavery. His long residence in Europe probably affected his point of view. Prior to the Civil War, George had hoped to be able to remove his family to Europe, but as James wrote, the war upset all plans. During the early part of the 19th century, Hoffel was one of the most innovative schools in the world. It included a seminary for the training of teachers, an agricultural school, and a trade school known as the School of Industry. Poor students were also accepted and traded their labor for education. The school still exists today and is operated as a public high school and an art school. Another question we frequently get is about the pronunciation of the word. Here it is pronounced as Hofwil. In Switzerland, it is now pronounced as Hofiel. It isn't known how it would have originally been pronounced, but as George Dent spoke German, French, Italian, and Latin, it is assumed that he would likely have pronounced the word as he had heard it while living in Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson in history from Hoffel Broadfield Plantation.